Do you know what's interesting? We were just talking yeah. about things, um, like just as a as a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, was it always produ- Was it always producing for you? It wasn't. You know, it was actually. Um, like I, I used to sing. I still do. While I was singing in, in the beginning, like I wanted to make beats for myself. Mm-hmm. That's, like, that's how that came about, innit? Yeah. So. Yeah. So you doing what? Like, you doing was it like the R and B singing? What it was the R and B singing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like, I don't know, man. It just, it just like I just continued doing it, and then I, like the beats got sick of it as well. So I was just like, mm-hmm. still doing both. Well, well, how old were you at that time when you was doing that? Um, that's hard to say, man. Like late primary school days. I oh, early, 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 early. I don't want to give it like a false number, but I'm gonna say like twelve. You make beats at times or? Yeah, maybe like 11, 12, yeah. Make beats that early? Yeah, 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 yeah. make beats right. early, man. Yeah. Was that a Fruit Loops thing or was it? So, like, my dad had this um, rolling keyboard, mm-hmm. like back in like the, the floppy days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I used to, um, like, he used to make beats on there, like, just because he used to do his thing, like, musically as well. He used to be out there. So, he had that, and I just, like, tried to do my thing on it. Like, it was, now that I look back at it, it was long, because, like, he had, like, memory banks and, like you couldn't mix anything on the keyboard, it was crazy. But um so yeah, I started on that and then like I saw FL became a thing, like I heard people talking about FL, mm-hmm. so I jumped on FL and then yeah. Yeah, that's so then because I guess I asked the prior thought I had about how supportive your family be about music, but if you really come from that background, mm-hmm. your past probably really seeing the sun picking up on you. Yeah, yeah. And I've had that support. For real? Yeah, yeah, like my sister, my bro, my bro does video, you know what I'm saying? So, like, we have that creativity in the family. So, yeah. yeah. Was it, what was school like for you then? Was it, were you, were you academic or were you just more on the arts then? Bit of both, man. Yeah. I was like, I was quite nerdy, I can't even lie. Like, I was like, I want to say I was the best at maths or English and like that, but it was, yeah, I was pretty, like, head screwed on, like, got my thing done and good grades. Came up, was still doing music in sixth form, and like I didn't go to uni, but here we are. Was that was that was that was that because you wanted to pursue music, or you just didn't want to? I didn't. I didn't actually want to go at the time. Anyway. Okay. I wanted to do an apprenticeship, but like yeah. the way things aligned at the time, like music kind of popped off. Like at the time when I would have went and got like an apprenticeship, in it. so I was like I might as well just you know, let's continue doing music. Like maybe one day I might. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go for like, you know, yeah, certification. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you said all the things. Okay, so when you're making beats, yeah, like yeah. When, when when did you want it to be like a livelihood? Because we'll get to the business part later. But making yeah. beats, yeah, yeah, and trying to get people to rap on it to it making money to have like that's a whole gap. So when that's you're at that gap. stage where you're trying to get the beats out, what's what's kind of like the struggle at that point? in terms of like trying to get the right people to hear your music or to lay vocals on it. Yeah. What's the struggle, would you say? Um, it's, it's just like not being known like that. People are like, oh, why should I go on his beats? Like what's, what's so different in it? But it's just, I guess it's like, it's about the persistence in like, just trying to be different, trying to do your own thing. Um, just trying to get your name out there where possible in it. Yeah, that's, that's mm-hmm. all I say about that, yeah. And you said, um, you know, when you were, when you would have quote unquote gone to uni, things started to like make moves for you mm-hmm. yourselves. So what, what was that the, the significant moment where you thought, I'm kind of like on my way now? Okay, I'd say um, probably like after one of the remakes, mm-hmm. like that, like kind of solidified things. Like I knew from there, okay, like I can make a career out of this. Mm-hmm. Like this can be something I do for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So. That was probably the defining moment, yeah, for real. And from then, what does it, is, is everyone start reaching this? Are people coming to you now? Yeah, yeah, people people reach out, like, you'll get, like, you'll get the label offers, you'll get the publishing offers, you'll get, like, you know, like, pe- people, like, they'll pay a bit more attention to your name because they hear your name going around in meetings and different spaces, offices and things. And so it's just like, once you go on Instagram, you hit someone up, you think you can hit them up, like, a year ago, now it's like, yo, bro, he's saying that. Like, everyone's cool now, so. Everyone's bro, in it. Everyone's bro. <laughs> so, but no, I, I, I understand, like, mm-hmm. being in that position, mm-hmm. why that is, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, you can't work with everyone. Mm-hmm. But, at 
the same time, like you don't want to miss out. So, all right. So you're you're, you're moving. You're, you're get your name's coming out. Yeah, people hitting you up. At this point, do you have management? I do. No, I mean, I don't, so I don't, I don't, at that time, no, I was doing it like basically on my own. But I had people helping me mm -hmm. on the side, so I can't even, mm -hmm. even take credit for that. But yeah. But, I mean, how overwhelmed is it overwhelming when you're just like getting all these, not strangers, but people are coming to you saying, we want to offer you this money, we want you to sign with this. Because like, at a certain point, you're going to have to tell no, you're going to say no to one of these people. Yeah. And there's a point where you want to kind of keep them all on side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And being relatively young when it happened, like, how did you process that? It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's about the person, like, mm -hmm. where you come from, like, are you, are you, like, getting into an industry like this, like, you have to be, like, you can never really be ready, but you have to, like, set your mind up for something like that to happen mm -hmm. any time of the day. Like, you can, you can have a hit tomorrow, like, you have to be ready mentally, like, let's go. But, mm -hmm. you know, like, a lot of people don't come ready for that, and that's fine, like, it's, it comes with its challenges, isn't it? But, um, it's, it's the other things like you gotta have the right people around you at the time like, to keep your head straight and like yeah it's it's it can get overwhelming but like once you know what you're doing once you have like people in your circle that you can trust things like align yeah it's a lot easier did you have like um I know you got probably like friends in the industry but during that period did you have friends within the industry that you can just go get advice from yeah so like by that time I. Sign like my publishing deal with um, Fraser T. Smith, mm -hmm. so he's like probably the best mentor you could oh, you ask for, you know what I'm oh, saying? Gee, yeah. So, yeah, like I'd, I'd be in the studio with him probably like every other week, so we'd, we'd, like, we'd have our chats, we'd have a WhatsApp, etc. And like, yeah, so I had that, like his, his wife Sarah as well, like she was there to help, and I had my family just mm -hmm. supporting me, and like, you know, everyone that came up at that time as well was just. Pretty much like a family at the time, for real. Yeah, I mean, like, probably like Fraser T. Smith is, he's kind of like an oracle in this thing. Yeah, like, do you get what I mean? Like, that's just, that's an amazing energy circle to be around. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, what kind of jobs has he dropped on you? Like, just whether it's producing or just yeah. how to carry yourself in the industry? Um, that's a hard one to do. But there's, there's a couple I'd say, like, one of them is um, just being humble, right? Like, when you walk into a room, like just remember, like everyone, everyone's a person. Like no one's yeah. alien. Like no one's above you. No one's lower than you. We're all people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make music. We're trying to be creative in it. So that's one thing. One thing I learned from him. Um, a couple other things are like just to do with like making songs, like how to structure songs and what instruments are right for different songs and the mix, like where the mix sits, like where different instruments sit in the mix. Um, and just like probably timekeeping as well, like you don't wanna, you gotta remember like although you are a producer, you are in the industry, you're working with people that might be late. You gotta like, you gotta be professional. Mm -hmm. People are coming to you for a service at the same time. Like, it is your hobby, it's fun, but it's still a service that you have to you have to provide. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Because I I feel what about I guess we can talk about the parts of um, because I guess I say culturally. Mm. I don't think a lot of us come up in the black music scene fully understand. Yeah, they'll be like, yo, but bro. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we're cool. Yeah. It's a service though, isn't it? Exactly. You know what I mean? So how, how do you contend with a part where, I guess you've got manager, if that makes sense, how do you contend with a part where you're dealing with people who may not fully understand the business, but mm -hmm. still kind of want a service, but not deal with it as a service, if that makes yeah. sense? You know what, the one thing I learned there yeah, is like, you just have to be honest in it. Like, there's no point in trying to like, like skirt around and like, just be honest. Like, look, bro, end of the day, like, I'm doing things here, I'm doing things here, these things cost money, mm -hmm. I have to pay my bills, this is my livelihood right now. So, like, if you can't, then, you know what I'm saying? Like, just have to explain to them that like, this is a business. So, if they can't understand that, then, you know, terms you're with that person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I see. I mean, many people may not. I mean, I, I know about your disco discography of the mm -hmm. people that you work with, but the notable names that you work with for production and also about your own stuff, yeah. like, um, do you want to list them out? Yeah. And the songs. Ooh. It's names. Yeah, the names of the songs and the artists that you've been working with. Um, 18 Honor, 
probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. Eight on uh, Petty One Dave, mm -hmm. um, Craig David, The Time Is Now, that album. Um, I can't even say some of these guys, I didn't even put the songs out yet. What are the ones that are out of? Uh, Rich Free 2, That's Insurance, Spin Around, Big song. Um, Dave, he produced Funky Friday, I don't know, a few bits on that. Um, yeah, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot. Let's talk about Eddie though, quickly though. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie, I think, within the that drill scene, mm. Nah, I think Eddie's my favorite. He uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause he, he's up there, man. Yeah, it's he, crazy. Cause he, he, I think he's the one that actually finds a pocket to still say something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on those beats. Yeah, cause he's actually, he's actually getting the message out at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so how does that, how does that, how did that studio session go with you and Eddie? Were you there? Did you send the beat? How did, how did that all come together? Is that for eighty nine? Yeah. So um, that was like, like a label thing. Like people set it up and like. I've been a fan of him for a long time, like, I see like, his videos online, like, some with like, Westwood and yeah. it's like, yo, this guy's mad. So the yeah. flows he can keep and the cadence and it's like, yeah, we need to, we need to do something. So, yeah, he came in, like, he's not, I don't, I don't want to speak for him anymore, but like, he, he'll know what I'm talking about. Like, he's not the most talkative person initially, mm -hmm. which is expected because he don't really, they really know you. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, you know, I was just like, I was playing some beats and then, like, that one I played and then I, I wasn't actually going to play it, like, it was one of my beats, which is... Oh, for your own stuff. For my own stuff, <laughs> but I wasn't, I couldn't have went over that anyway, mm -hmm. so I was like, I just played it and then, like, you know, sometimes I, like, I turn around just to check mm -hmm. if he's feeling what I'm playing. So, yeah, I, I turned around, I sort of nodding and smiling, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah this guy, <laughs> he's, he's, he's feeling this one, so... Um, yeah, literally like probably about five to ten minutes later, ready. Please. Yeah, he's like set the mic up and ready. And then he he, he done it in like about four or five takes. It's quick. He it came out the song that quick in his head? Yeah, I don't know how he done it. I don't know how he done it. Maybe he had like bits like pre written or something, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. It was quick. I mean it sounds cliche like after so like, after he finishes his works and the as and the tunes that like, basically laid like Yeah. Instinctively, do you think, now nah, this is a banger, or do you think, boy, I'm not sure where this one's gonna go? Cause that song was huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard it from like, from when he got on the mic and he dropped the floor, I heard it in my head, I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. I know exactly what I need to do, mm -hmm. I know exactly where I need to position things, and like, I spoke to him and he was like, yeah, this can go here, that can go here. Like, I, like, a lot of the time when I finish sessions with artists, I kind of know already like where the song needs to go. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I guess you, you, you're a beat maker, but you also are like a producer as well. Yeah. Like knowing where pieces will go. Because I think a lot of so we all say that thing about beat yeah. maker, producer. Mm. Um, where, where does that, where does that air come from then? Knowing where things should be? Um, probably just like my, my musical knowledge, like just listening to different types of music, like old school, new school, 90s, 2000s, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. Variety, just so you know, like, there's different types of structures, like it doesn't have to be, you know, your typical pop first chorus, first mm -hmm. chorus, like mm -hmm. there's different ways you can do it. But at the same time you need to be able to know like the history of why those structures are work, yeah. why those structures have always been used for like hit songs, you know. So I think this is probably just come from that. And from my own stuff as well, I'm kinda like I'm kinda used to that verse chorus mm -hmm. kind of structure. So yeah, I don't yeah. know, you know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense, man. Because I think some producers, um, I think they're stuck in a current sound. Yeah. And that's what I was actually going to say to you, that do you, this is something that I hear from other producers, but I don't know if this has been your experience. Mm -hmm. A song's popping, mm -hmm. come into the studio session, and it asks you for a beat, like a beat, that is maybe already out. Oh, so a beat, can you make me a beat like? Yeah, okay. it was as a reference point, do you, right? do, do you ever have to contend with that? And if you do, how do you? And then if not, how do? Is your session just like you're just gonna play them beats and let them pick, or you sometimes start from scratch? Like what? I'm sure it's probably a mix of all. It's it, yeah. So I'll, I'll answer that for you. So it's like sometimes it like it depends on the artist. I'll play beats for them. Like I say, a lot of rap artists because it, like it kind of sets the mood for the mm -hmm. session. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they like to hear like where you're coming from mm -hmm. first of all, like, the mood and everything. So. 
sometimes I'll, I'll play some beats first. Sometimes, like, you know, we'll just have a chat, see where things are going, and yeah. see where your head is at, and then I'll concoct something up in my head, and then we'll, like, I'll just get to it. And then, like, yeah, the times where um, people are asking for a beat like that, like, I've got no problem with doing it. Like, mm-hmm. I, can, I can make anything I want to. Mm-hmm. Then, but it's just one of those things you have to, you have, to have an open mind in it, but mm-hmm. I, I, I will do it, I will just do it my own way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I won't do it the same, but I'll do it, yeah. Yeah, man, because... And then let's also talk about um, mm-hmm. the work you've done with Blanco. Like yeah. I was saying before, I was, um, I've been around him quite a lot recently. Yeah. Um, so no wonder, mm-hmm. that beat hard, bro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that was that that um your was it your vocal tag is mad you know was it how, what's, what's, what effect is it on it was it one six it's, um, it's like one six nine nine yeah play. yeah so um, I got one of my cousins from America to do it. oh for real yeah I wanted it to sound like, a lot of people think it's me in it but I wanted it to sound authentic in it yeah. so I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it works so. nah bro, it sounds it sounds good <laughs> <sounds, laughs> so that I mean so was that was that a label situation again or was it just you guys already had a rapport. It was, it was a label situation, but like, the, the thing is that like, a lot of the time when labels send these things through, it's like, I do listen, like, I have to like the person if I'm like, yeah, I wanna, mm-hmm. wanna go through. So it's never like formulated or anything, mm-hmm. but they sent, they sent Blanco through, I heard, I was like, yeah, I like, I like Blanco, and obviously he, he's in um, Heart and Swans so anyway, so I knew of him, and like, yeah, man, we, we linked up, and I don't know what it was here, but I heard his flow, and I was like, I kind of know how I want him to go on a certain beat and like, let me just, so yeah, that's that. That's what came of that session. One thing I mean, like, one thing yeah. I would like, so one thing I would like, like, you guys probably like, and maybe it's just a little bit younger than me, mm. but you probably, when the Harlem Spartans were blowing, that's still your, your air, like they were the biggest thing. They were the biggest thing, man. And one thing I like to see with Blanco is, He's quite particular. He's quiet in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he takes his time, isn't it? it does he, he takes, takes his time? time. <laughs> yeah. But it makes sense because yeah. he's like he, he's weaving yeah. flows. He's, he's writing like it's, it's not it's not the same. It's yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I think he's somebody that um, yeah. I think a lot of people that he's not what people say, but it's underrated he, right now. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's underrated right now. Um, did you produce anything else on this? Uh, the EP was just someone on the... Can I say? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's coming so, out next week, so yeah. Okay, so that, there's a um, tune on there with um, Mitch. Oh, yeah, 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 so... Yeah. Can I say the name of that? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That, I think that one's called Where I'm, where I'm From. Mm. That one's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, that's, it's that, and then I mixed like a couple other songs on it, so... You know, one of my favorite songs in the project, um, yeah. Slums. Slums is hard. Slums is hard. Slums is hard. Unreal, bro. Yeah. I love that beat. Yeah. 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 yeah man. I can't wait for it to come up, man. He's gonna, hopefully he does well. Hopefully yeah. he does well. So when, when you, obviously you're making your own, you, you got your own projects, your own singles that you're working on. Um, yeah. Was that always your plan or was it something that management said to look, this is another way to get yourself out there. How did that come together? It was always like, you know what, I just love making music and mm-hmm. so like whichever comes first comes first. But I'm ne- I'm never gonna stop like singing or I'm never gonna mm-hmm. stop mixing or making beats. Like I'm just I just love music in it. So it, it just came with it naturally. It was one of those things. So I'm I'm just gonna just gonna keep it going. Do you do you have like, I wonder, I always think like, having friends, like, I think there's too many people doing music, mm. per se. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that's the first thing, like, everyone's a rapper, a producer, yeah, yeah. a presenter, a vlogger, a stylist, or whatever, right? Mm. Do you now have a lot of your friends who are like, saying, like, fam, can I get a beat? Not, maybe not friends, let me say people who, people who maybe know of you through somebody that, it's just, um, it's, yeah, a couple times, but it's never been like, anyone badgering me or anything like that but like I think not not, not like in a disrespectful but people kind of know like you know this is this is what I do so well, I think I think you set levels now isn't it yeah it's like, like if you're gonna if you're gonna like like I said no disrespect like as, as my, my brothers know if you're gonna come to me with 
you know, proposal to make a song, like, you have to, you have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to, you have to be on it because I'm gonna come with it. I'm gonna work hard for it. Like, you have to work hard for it as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So also, what's what's the, what's the plan for you though? Like, I know obviously you got you got music coming out, but mm-hmm. is it EP? Is it album? What yeah. are we looking at? I'm looking to drop an EP still. Yeah, I've been working on it for a while now. Like, just trying to. Just do something different, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not really interested in like numbers or fans or anything like that. Like, I love, I love fans. I love TV. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not really interested in what well, like, I just want to make music and put it out there for people to enjoy. It, you know what I'm saying? So I've worked on this for a while now, and like, yeah, it's ready. Now I respect that because yeah. we're, we're definitely in an era where a lot of a lot of things are being made. Just so it can go viral. Exactly, and I do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not for that. Do you um? But when you're working on your project, though, do you ever? I mean, obviously there's gonna be other artists on it, but yeah. is there ever a time when you're thinking, like, let me grab that for my thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> times when I'm making it, you know, maybe I should like, yeah. maybe I should make a variation of it and mm-hmm. tuck that one away. Yeah, it's happened. It's happened. Yeah. But like sometimes. That's just like you got the discipline to know like yo, heady one is gonna sound better on eighty none than me. Like why would I? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Why would I keep that? Like, but you know that's a that's familiar though. Because some people some people just be like, nah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, you, you you gotta know yo, this is this is fire man. Like I can't keep that to myself. Like I can make I can make that again. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, you said you said you said about um so some people would understand how like. Producers get solicited via label, so mm-hmm. is it that they'll come with a brief and say, "Look, we signed this artist, we want to get in the studio," mm-hmm. and then that will probably come to you, come to management. So usually it's the label or the A and R's reaching out, or reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'll reach out. They'll be like, "Yo, like, you know, for example, like Blanco's working on this EP, or Blanco's, you know, he's trying to get his thing done. Do you want to get in a session? Like, he's done this, he's done that." How do you feel about it? So it's usually usually the A and but like there there will be times when I like personally hit people up that I'm feeling like, like yeah I wanna get in with this person and definitely like make some bangers. So I think that's one bit like I think like when creators when creators are together yeah as long as the business get panned mm-hmm. but you got a vibe with people bro yeah exactly so you know I mean? exactly because like, I mean, music is a vibe isn't it mm-hmm. so you know what I mean mm-hmm. what would you say is being you're still really, I don't want to say you're young, but yeah. I'm young, some, man, I'm young. Yeah, me young, young but I want, yeah. you, you have some big moves, bro. They set it around every way. Set it around every yeah. Seeing the success, man. I hear that. I hear um, that. What's been the most challenging part, though, in the transition so far? Because being young, mm. uh, the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll throw out there is yeah. I think people start pocket watching. Yeah. They think. Yeah, that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that happens. That happens, but like, you just. Mm. Black out, man. Don't watch it. Don't mm. watch it. Um, do you wanna do you wanna finish that question? Or? Yeah, no. So, like, so first of all, people think that like, ah, oh, so that's someone number one. Mm. You must have made because like no one knows how splits work. And yeah, yeah, it's not. It, 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 it's and money don't. It doesn't come. It comes incrementally at a certain yeah, period. Yeah, months so after, it's months it's after, like quarterly. Yeah. It's not mm. instant. Oh yeah, you know, he was on. This piece, so yeah, he just made a million. <laughs> like, no, it's not. It's not like that. Like yeah, like the money can come, but it's not. You know, it's not nothing. Like you'd think, like man's buying like twelve mansions. Or yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, but um, probably the challenges that come with it, I'd say, is like is is being ready for what's next. Like that's always at the back of your mind. Like. Mm-hmm. Even at the front of your mind, sometimes you're like, can I do? That again, like although you don't want to do it again, it's like can I reach that level of success again? Like that crosses your mind all the time. Like you always want to top yeah, the yeah. last work, you know. And that is, I think that's what like gets to a lot of people, a lot of artists, mainly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's that that thought process and that. Like, yeah. Another thing I'd say is like um, the money side of it. It's like when a lot does come to you, you have to be strong man because you don't want to go out and just blow it all at once in it so it's probably another one of the challenges and yeah it's it, it, it's like you just gotta have a strong mind man that's all i say mm. it's, it's one of them things and even when you do you, you 
you've got to be willing to speak to people and talk to people around you and, and don't isolate yourself. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, that rhymes on that one for as well. Mm -hmm. That was like, like we were just, because obviously when they bought his yard, didn't it? You yeah. see a man and buying houses now and then you start thinking to yourself. <laughs> you're looking at what you may have spent yeah. money on, you'd be like, I actually could have got a house for me if I yeah, yeah if I never bought that but, but it's like man they were so young he had so much bro it's like the first do you know it's the thing with money yeah when mm -hmm. you don't have responsibilities but the money comes yeah it means that you have to almost be responsible for the money but mm -hmm. man ain't got you man ain't yeah man so that yeah, it's still, yeah, yeah, still, still the child in the house isn't it yeah, yeah. so then it's like the money now becomes the thing to get the things that one always wanted mm -hmm. the watch the chain the, something that I want to get I can now get it yeah so you, you, you always get a point where you need to get some of the things that you, you kind of wanted first and then yeah this is all the future up yeah exactly yeah. I mean, everyone, 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 blows, everyone blows a bit of pee and think oh man, you know what I'm kind of low now like, I didn't <laughs> really need to do yeah, that it happens man it happens yeah, yeah but, but you, feel, you forget you'll make it back yeah. if, you're, if you're working hard you're doing your thing you'll make it back you know you said that point about um uh always kind of trying to top yourself yeah and i'm speaking to you probably would know um you know craig davis album and you you yeah. know matt matt dodd and uh colin lester okay you were working on as his managers and colin lester used to say to me he said as an artist you've got to be a repeat offender mm. that's the language you use like if you have a number one it's not much number one mm. can you do it again it's about can you do it again and then that's the other one the part, correct and the yeah. other language is can you make a record stick? Not come and go, mm -hmm. but it's a stick. state. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. And these are things that I think sometimes we, within this scene here, think, ah, oh, million views, ah, oh, top 20, boom, gone. Yeah. No, it's not about that, man. It's mm -hmm. got to last, it's got to be, like, if, you, if you're going to create a moment for music, like, mm -hmm. let it last, man. Let it be something people remember for, like, lifetime, not like, it's a quick top 10 for a week yeah. or two, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I hope I, hope I don't do that. Like, I'm trying to mm -hmm. be legendary. I'm trying to like, come different. Do you, do you see, do you see, and I, don't, I won't necessarily, necessarily say he's an inspiration, but do you see Labyrinth as someone who's an inspiration in terms of the way that, Labyrinth? He, yeah, the way he's been unconventional and yeah. his approach. And I used to actually listen to a lot of Labyrinth music like, back mm -hmm. in the day. Like, I don't remember a lot of the names now, but like, yeah man, his his approach was completely different, man. Electronic and mm -hmm. he was working with a lot of pop artists as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's he's definitely like a low key pioneer out here, man. You you are who you are, but I think just the whole thing hearing you talk about just you wanna create what you wanna create. Yeah. And the external things aren't that important. Let me just make what I wanna make mm -hmm. and let you guys just hear what I'm thinking as opposed to creating because you think this is what they wanna hear. Yeah. But it's two different things. Yeah, do you yeah, understand? And I think you're more on the other side where you're like, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Being the innovator. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because like, be that's a be. A lot of people your age don't, they don't want to be innovators. Yeah. Do you get me? They just want to be like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I want to be, I want to make, I want to be like that, man. Yeah. Like, where did that come from? Like, is that just a character or? I don't know, you know. I just like. I know you must, if you, not, if you get what I'm saying, like, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. I think I think whenever you're doing anything man, unique to yourself, that comes with it because you enjoy doing it. So like, if you enjoy doing it, then naturally you're gonna wanna, you're gonna take it places that someone else wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna experiment with it and then go here. You're gonna go yeah, there. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. Just like, just because it's a thing for myself, innit? it. Mm. So yeah. Well, well we're not seeing. Do we have mm. enough? artists who are willing to make experimental music kind of like because I know someone like someone like Wretch is mm. I mean Wretch is like he's, 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 he's on go level yeah for me like but do you feel like the scene in general could open its mind up to making different types of sounds because I don't know that like, artists like don't know about that sound you know it's, you know what it is it's out there man it's just like it's just not on their media radar because you know what I'm saying Cause so maybe getting a push or a playlist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that like a lot of those those artists that have like their, their core fan bases, like they'll just be doing their thing and mm -hmm. people respect it. Mm -hmm. But um, there's the other side of it where like people don't mind experimenting, but they'd rather just 
get a quick check, man. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like make bangers and do what they can do. So I think, yeah, that it's, it's out there, man. The music's out there. It's just mm -hmm. it's about what's on your radar and what you listen to. But there, there, I think there could be like, there, there are people trying to push that envelope and trying to make things sound different. Like, a lot of producers doing that as well. Man, like Ill Blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, Elbow, of course. He's he's trying to come different, man, mm -hmm. and I respect that. I respect that. So there's more of us. So I mean, he was there for time. Like, yeah, he's yeah. been there for a while. Yeah, 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 for a while. Do you um? So you said that this is this is all that you want to do, but so what's your situation now? Like, yeah, you signed to a label or no? Just so, publish it. Just publish it. So yeah. all the records you're putting out is is that just independent? Technically. Okay, yeah, cool, technically. And that's probably so you can also have control of how and when you're just going to be... I can, I can release, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'll be, I'll be wondering, like, like, a lot of the labels and the majors are all trying to just sign up all the producers now. Mm. I know Sony's, Sony's picked up quite a few. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, do you, do you, I'm not saying that you're against it, yeah. but why not go down the major route? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not against it. It's just it's a thing where like it's gotta be the right time, mm -hmm. the right money. Because essentially, like when you when you're gonna sign with a major, like people sign with majors for different reasons, and mm -hmm. but um, you know, one guy could sign to a major because he wants to support, so he can shoot his videos and they can look pattern. Um, another one might you know want it so they can have more studio time. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Um, the main reason though is for the money. Like you want that big check and you want the label backing you so you can do everything you need to do, you can create the image you need to create. So um, yeah, it's, it's about time, I'm not against it. So let me challenge so I'm thinking basically, yeah. you may say, I'm good. I'm good right now. Yeah, I can make my beats, I've got my studio, mm -hmm. I'm all right financially, so I don't need to, I don't need to worry about that for now. Right, but if the opportunity comes, and Everything's right, numbers are right, mm -hmm. people are right, because the team there matters as well. Yeah. So that all has to align before mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll make that move. Because essentially it's like, it's a loan. You know what I mean? Do you, you want to see that? No, no, they don't see it. You don't see it like that. Money that you but it's not free money. Yeah. Especially if you're not performing. That's yeah. the other thing you got to look at. you got to make sure you can perform in it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about that, so then, mm -hmm. obviously you, you're still, an artist, you're still an artist yourself. Yeah. Are we going to be getting live shows from you in the future? Then? It will. It yeah. Will. Yeah, it will happen. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Because yeah. that's. Because also, another good friend of mine, Malik Berry, mm -hmm. good friend of mine, and obviously he just started as a producer. Yeah. And I remember why he went to be an artist, he was saying that, because obviously in, in the whole Afrobeat scene, like all the songs I do, I'm big in Nigeria, but there's no PRS or nothing. Mm -hmm. So with the beat can we get spun there over there? Then I'm making nothing over here. That's do you know what I mean? ridiculous, yeah. But like now he's obviously doing, like, he good, because he's producing and so all that, the splits is just like, distribution, sense. Just it's just a distribution yeah. split that goes, but yeah. the whole revenue is coming towards him, so, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can, I can and, and, and to be honest, he's up more than most artists. Secretly. You Secretly, you will know it. And I think a lot of producers that I know, why they, they don't, they're not trying to be so loud. Cause they used to that mm -hmm. being reserved. Yeah, 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 yeah. For when it's just coming, that thing look different to the eyes. It's sometimes. different. Yeah, 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 yeah. People don't know, man. Although, although sometimes the money might be like not what you expect it to be. It's like you forget the work you're putting in. It, it does pay out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man. It's, you gotta have your hands in mm -hmm. all types of different pots. You get me? And we ask, we ask um, a couple of questions just to try and educate. Um, Producers, yeah. Um, if you don't know any of the answers of it, that's cool. So, in terms of um, PRS, that's paid quarterly, or is it? Is it every? I think three? it's. I think it's. It's, it's quarterly. Was it supposed to six months? No, it's not six months. Okay, it's, it's quarterly. It's like yeah, it's quarterly. Quarterly, yeah. So as a so as a producer, yeah. Um. When you when you when you go into um. Situations now. Do you, do you sort out split sheets or do you leave it to management or just leave it to management? Leave it to management? Yeah. Or, or if, if you want to do it in a session, man. 
You can do but this, push you push 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 the vibe, you're kind of like, that's the vibe, yeah, that kills the vibe. Yeah. But it, it depends on how you are with that person, do you know what I'm mm. saying? Like, if you're just meeting them, and like, stay away from that, like, mm. don't really bring that up in this session unless it's like, imperative, like, that's mm. important and it's that. Mm. That's rare, mm. that's rare, so, yeah. 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 And um, in terms of like samples, mm. have you had any issues with samples before, or clearing them? Yeah, I've had a few, I've had a few. But um, the first one was Tiago Silva. Like, it, was, it wasn't really hard to clear, it was just like, you know, it, it was the first time we had to clear something. Yeah. So it was, it was, a, it was a different experience. Yeah. So um, it's Tiago Silva, that's, that's probably the only one I've come across mm -hmm. like, in my time. Because I try not to like, mm -hmm. sample too much. I want to. I'll probably do more now. Cause I can, I'm working with people that can get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right. But yeah, back then it wasn't, it wasn't so simple. Um, well, what, what, what do you, what do you, if you could change a couple of things about the music industry, to say two things that like if you could change completely about the music industry, what would you change? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So you can't drop them questions on me like that. <laughs> You'll give me some, some time to think about. Um, I don't know, man. I'd say, I'd say it's in a good place right now, man. Like, people are collaborating. That's probably one thing I'd ask for, like more collaboration, but that's that's already happening. Mm -hmm. I'd say um, probably just some more recognition for producers. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's it's happening slowly, but there needs to be some more because you got some you got some men out there that are just like killing it on a low key. So yeah. They don't know, so. Yeah, that's one thing, more recognition. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Do you, I mean, with that, I know, like, because I know quite a few. I know, um, I know SOS, obviously, and yeah. I know a lot of the producers sometimes feel that they have to sometimes go to America. Yeah. For recognition. Um, but I also think the artists could be more to, to kind of, like, hate other producers. Yeah. Do you, do you get what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it seems sometimes that like, I know the artists are at the forefront, but like, yo, this is, this is the guy that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Cause you, un unless people are doing stuff now where they're putting an artist name featuring, mm -hmm. no, putting their name featuring the artist, yeah. Bro, you don't know who produced anything. People so that's not doing the tags now, like, cause yeah, that's what the tags are for, man, mm -hmm. like, you know, cause the artists, I, I understand it, like, they can't always say, produced by this person, man. They got an image to uphold, they want everything to look clean, everything mm -hmm. to look clean, so I, I get that, just a minute. Yeah, 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 I get yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that that comes with it, innit? But like, that's why we have our tags. Mm -hmm. So just people know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's coming, innit? It's slowly, it's, it's slowly coming, but it's, it's, it's gonna happen. Cool, so that one is, um, that's, um, it's called No Fears, it's featuring Red Free 2. Mm -hmm. Like, respect to my man for that, like, damn. That, like, that's a special song. Yeah, so. Did you just produce it or you also on it as well? I produced it, I'm on it, I mixed it. Featuring Red Free Tea, so uh, it's a it's a big move. Do you know I've been let's talk let's talk about it. I like the title yeah. No Fears yet. Yeah. But I've been in, I've been in the studio one time with Red. Mm -hmm. It was about three four years ago because Zion is one of his managers. Yeah, yeah. So we went uni together. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. like, I was in the studio was in the studio at night near Fiji Park. Mm -hmm. the one, no, near um sorry, higher in Islam, mm -hmm. just around the back there. And bro, like when like Rich. Doesn't write. Doesn't write. Bro, like, bro, you know maybe you're like, nah, man, don't write. I was like, whatever, bro. bro, I see Rich, right? And you can tell me how you're doing this. Yeah. Actually, I'm going Let me, you tell me, <laughs> if you were to do that, what was, the, what was the experience like making a song with Rich then? It's, it's different, man. It's like, like, like you know, because it's, it's, a, it's a mad experience. It's a mad experience. Yeah. It's, it's quite open. You have your space to do what you need to do. He's not writing. So like, I mean, I don't know if it's the same for everyone else in it, but like, you will literally, depending on the size of the room, you're dancing around the room, just rapping right into yourself, and like, it's, it's nice, man. Mm. Cause like, you can hear him building a song, and you can build it with him, so it's like, it's like the perfect collaborative process. So, yeah, he's, he's mad. I don't know how he does that. Right straight out of his head, I don't know how he does that, that's so And then he goes straight into the booth? Straight into the booth. Cause like, the way he's doing it, it's not like, He's, he's, he's writing it and then writing it on paper mm -hmm. in his phone. 
it's like he's writing it in his head. <laughs> it's just a fact. In the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's mad. So that, that there's a couple artists that can do that. There's there's a few, um, but it's it's a talent. That's so, a talent. Nah, it is. So 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 no thing. What's what's the what's the concept behind it then? So yeah, the concept behind No Fear is like, that song's very much so like, like my vision, where I want to be, everything I want to do, like the priorities that I have set in my life and like just positivity, do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like that's, that's the vibe of the song. Mm-hmm. So very much so about myself, my journey, like Rich talks about his life from there as well, but it's not really a deep song, but it's, it's something to vibe to like. Is that uplifting as well? Pardon? Is that uplifting? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to hearing that. Driving music. Yeah? Driving music. Okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. I feel like studio sessions are almost like, you know, people talk about mental health and therapy, but I've noticed that studio sessions is like, mm-hmm. that's the safe space where yeah. man them could talk about what's really going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Even before, whether it goes on the song or not, but it almost becomes like a bit of a therapy it's, session. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's common. Like, it, for a lot, for a lot of people, that's where obviously they go to get their, like you know, their stress out. Yeah, the release. Yeah. They, it's, they, it's their release, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, like for me, that's that's beats, man. So mm-hmm. open up the laptop. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm in another world. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah. So yeah. And, and in closing, like what? Okay, it's just in closing. Mm-hmm. Um, EP up top of next year, hopefully. Yeah, single that'll be out when we put this out. We'll put this out. Um, Give me like three tips for producers. Three tips. Yeah. If you can, mix your own beats. Um, don't get complacent. Always try something new. And yeah, man, do it for the love, don't do it for the money. That's that's what I say. Because the money will come, you know. The it money will come, come. It will come. come. And be with activity. Yeah. He said, be prepared, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. Explain your name. 169. Yeah, sorry, man. That's yeah, how it's that. <laughs> So, um, oh, it's Brejan, Rexman. Shout out Rexman, man. Um, back in the day, we used to go to um, a Brejan called Eden. Like, he set up like, a studio in him. And, like, we were just, like, just having fun them times there, man. Just, like, making music and, like, we were naming ourselves, innit? So, he was going off, like, the whole, it's like, it's like a punchline there, like, he used to call himself 25A instead of 24-7. Got it. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. So like, I was like, let me take the piss in it. Just out of his name, let me, let me take the piss. It's like, how much hours in the week? It's like 168. So like, I'm gonna call myself 169. Just to, just yeah, take the piss yeah. out of him. But then like, it stuck in it. And then he started calling me 169. I was like, you know what? I'll just run with it, man. It, sound, it sounds calm, it makes sense. So. And and, and, it, and it's particular to you now. It's particular to me. Yeah. yeah so. That's it, man. That's the, that's, that's the meaning of the name, but listen, mm-hmm. one six nine, sir, bro. One six nine. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you very much, man. Nah, Thank literally, you. I've been, I've been deep in a lot of the work, man, and it's like it's so encouraging to see someone your age, not even your age, but someone who, the way you think about music. Yeah. You know the people that you know around you. Mm. Yeah, bro, you're, you're you're moving in the right direction. Thank man. you, bro. I love what you're doing as well. This oh, is nah. it's amazing, bro. People nah, are appreciate it as well. Everything's correct. Nah, bro, I appreciate yeah. it, man. Nah, listen, man, when you when you when you get super big, please don't forget us. I won't, I won't, <laughs> I won't trust me. Ah, uh, no, bro, thank, thank you, you very much.